Hi, welcome back. Today I have a very pointy topic. I need to make a bunch of needles. They look like tiny tick welding electrodes. And in fact, they are also made out of tungsten, just like a tick welding electrode. But they are, they are let's say, they are needles for a flux capacitor to adjust the flux and time with pinpoint accuracy. So I, start, I, I, purchased, uh, I purchased tungsten wire in a spool and the problems with working with tungsten were not 100% clear to me when I took on this project. So uh, the first problem was the spool of wire because uh, the wire had quite a bit of shape to it, meaning a coil, and I had to find a way to straighten it. And at that moment I realized the problems and the fact that tungsten is extremely brittle. There's a very, it's very prone to, to snapping, breaking, splintering and ca causing all sorts of problems. So uh, this is a little bit of a journey in problem solving. So let's have a look. A quick demo how problematic the tungsten wire to work with is. There's a piece of the wire and I have a pair of bolt cutters here. I'm just going to snip the end of it. Doink. And there is a split. There is a split in the wire just from the stress we put into it by snipping it with a bolt cutter. Uh, that's the reason why I did the final cutting of the wire with an abrasive wheel instead of snipping it. Okay, let's put a piece of it in a vise and crush it and see what happens. As you can see, it frayed open like a piece of, uh, like if you, if you clamp a wooden dowel in a, in a vise and crush it. Uh, that's a very similar behavior. It almost splitting like wood lengthwise. It's really a strange behavior. So that's, that's the reason why I had to take some extra precautions when straightening the wire. Tungsten wire comes as a, as a, comes on a spool. Uh, this is 0.7 millimeter diameter and it's super, super springy. It behaves like spring steel wire, but it's super brittle. So as you can see when I take some some pliers and I bend it, it breaks right away. If you clamp it too hard in a vise, it will split open like, like a piece of wood. It, it behaves really, really strangely. I have to make a bunch of parts out of it, but I need the wire to be straight for that. Usually with softer wire, um, you can clamp one end in a vise and pull it straight with pliers or you grab the end and cordless drill and spin it a little bit and pull on it. That will straighten it out extremely well, but those techniques didn't work with the tungsten wire. It's way too brittle for this technique. I did what every sane person would do. I went on the internet and I googled and I found a paper from 1939 describing straightening 200 micron diameter wire for Geiger Miller tubes, which I think go into a Geiger counter. They describe by pulling the, the wire tight or um, straight, heating it up by applying a current over the entire length, and then giving it a little bit of a spin, then let it cool down. That should straighten it out. I didn't have a power supply uh, with high enough amperage to to cook the entire length of the wire, so I went with the oxy fuel torch and I'm using the lathe as a straightening bed. Or at the lathe, I set it up with collets. The wire goes into the spindle collet, gets clamped, and the other end goes into the tailstock chuck. I'm using the tailstock instead of the carriage because I have a little bit more overall travel with it. Even clamping the wire with the chuck here can crush and crumble the wire if I over tighten it. So I have to be a little bit on a careful side. Now I'm, I'm using my oxygen fuel torch here.
we're not going crazy with the size of the flame here and I'm also trying not to torch my DRO the, the back wall or the way covers or anything else the only thing that gets a little bit torched is the tail suck chuck but it will be fine so I'm just starting to heat the wire across its entire length and at the same time I'm pulling it tight with the with the hand wheel of the tail stock there we go I do that twice and yeah this will change the diameter of the wire by a small amount but uh, that shouldn't be a problem at all for the part I'm making okay now we this this start straightened out the wire mostly we can have a look at how the wire now looks when I undo the chuck. As you can see, it's already very, very straight compared to the <laughs> to the shape it had before. But we want it a little bit nicer, so get it back in this chuck, tighten it. Now we will apply some some torsion and spinning the, the spindle by hand. I mean it's tungsten wire. Uh, it's hard to melt through. And as you can see, I'm I'm heating a section and I'm giving it like half a turn. I'm also now that I rechucked it, I need to retighten it first. I'm, I'm pre tensioning it by heating it and pulling with the tail stuff, and then I'm applying the torsion by spinning the spindle. If I did this without heating the wire, I would crush the wire, it would split lengthwise. Tungsten is really a weirdly behaving material in that regard. Um, by heating it in sections and applying the torsion, um, the heated section will most mostly uh, spin and deform. And that deformation is what helps us to straighten the wire. Okay, and then from experimentation I found that I need to do another straightening pass with the tail stock. This is a mixture of stress relieving and adding stress and uh, mechanical straightening. It's all in one package here. So let's see how, how, it, how much shape it has left. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a, a relatively straight piece of tungsten wire. Okay, let's see. 
Oh, perfect. This is really looking quite nice. Um, this took some practice, but after a few tries and figuring out the order of what to do to the wire, this is really working well. I cut the wire into 60 millimeter long pieces with a small abrasive wheel and I need to clean them up. From the, uh, from the torch flame I have some scaling on them and I just want to get rid of it. So I'm using some 30 micron grit super finishing film. Super finishing film is basically a way nicer engineered sandpaper or emery cloth. Uh, it comes on a plastic backer. It has a very defined grain size. This is 30 micron. Now I can't tell you where to get it. Um, I have a spool of it with about two and a half thousand meters or something like that. Uh, this is normally used in industrial processes to super finish the bearing seats on crankshafts or camshafts, for example. Uh, and it's it's really good uh, to have around. Um, I think you can buy it in sheets too. I'm, I'm clamping the tungsten wire here in the collet and when I start the lathe you will see how reasonably true it runs for how we started out. That's reasonably straightened. So using some, some of the lapping film and I'm just using, a, in this case, a stone. You can also use a piece of wood or a, or a parallel or something like that as a backer and I'm just cleaning up the, the wire. It's a little bit funny to do this with the camera. Normally I would do it from, from this side, but then you see mostly my fingers. So I'm trying to do it from the back here. So. And I'm doing this before I grind the tiny point on these parts that they require. This is the fixture that I'm using to put the point on these needles. There's a little v-groove milled into the side of this block and there is a, a piece of spring seal screwed over it. I will show the fixture later from the other side. The spring steel goes in a pin vise small pin vise and that goes in a cordless drill just so I can spin it. Uh, run out is of no concern here because the fixture I built is basically a centerless grinding fixture which uses the wire itself to guide itself. So the wire goes in here and theoretically the grinding wheel would be above it and I push the wire into the grinding wheel like in a pencil sharpener then I traverse the grinding wheel off and then I'm left with a very, very nice point on the piece of tungsten wire. For that I start with the grinding wheel over here, inserting the tungsten wire. Well, turning on the spittle would help. And that way I get a really, really nice basic tip roughed out in no time with very little effort and extremely repeatable. And the concentricity of the needle tip to the wire itself is pretty darn good. Don't measure it really, but um, you would see any uh, deviation from center 
just by the way it looks. Oh, let's do another one. Grinding wheel goes back in starting position. And this process is really stupid to film because the grinding wheel covers the entire grinding process. I have my calipers here set to the stick out of the wire from the pin vise. So, there's a, on one hand it's a very manual process, on the other hand it goes very, very quickly. Just set the stick out of the wire in the pin vise, get the grinding wheel back in position. Here are the two needles under the toolmaker's microscope with about 30x magnification. The lower one, let's get it in frame, this one that you see right here is just ground with the diamond wheel and you can see, uh, this is not ideal to, to view, but I think you can see the, the semi-rough finish which comes from the diamond wheel. It's just a D25 diamond wheel. The grain size is 125 micron. So the finish is not uh, like a mirror, but um, the tip shape is very nicely roughed out. That's a, an excellent starting point for polishing it. Let's move to the other one. This one is polished all the way down with lapping film and the tool marks are way more even here. Um, I can't get it uh, to show better on this microscope but I think you can see a clear difference between those two and the upper one is what I'm after. Uh, nice a sharp tip. The tip here is like 10 microns wide. The, the, all the way to the end tip here in, in the crosshair. This distance here on the tip is like 10 microns. So that's the result and let's let's look at the polishing. Okay over at the lathe to polishing the needles. I go in the collet 
running at $3,000 RPM here. And we start up by polishing, by rough polishing it with the 30 micron super finishing film. You might have seen that I'm manipulating the lapping film in a way so I get a full line contact of the needle tip with the abrasive media. And I will do that when I run the hard stones too. This is a 600 grit aluminum oxide and this is an 800 grit aluminum oxide. These are, these are borite golden star uh, mold stones, 600 and then 800 grit. Then we follow up with some 3 micron lapping film. It's this pink stuff that's, uh, this, this stuff has an adhesive back and I just stick it to a parallel. The really the last step now is a piece of polishing wood with some one micron diamond paste on it. So here are 25 of the flux capacitor needles, all ground and polished. They only need to be cut to length, but that's a very simple setup on the surface grinder. I hope you enjoyed this very needling, problem solving exercise. Thanks for watching, thanks for the support and I'll be back.